Hello, and welcome to car basic cardiac telemetry series. Today we'll talk about sinal ether rhythms. To make sense of an EKG, these are the structures to remember. Sinoatrial node, the aid to ventricular junction, bundle branches, and Purkinje fibers. The sinoatrial node is located in the right atrium near the opening of the superior vena cava. This is a collection of specialized cells that is able to generate the electrical signal to initiate a heartbeat. The sinus node is the natural pacemaker of the human body. From here, the electrical signal spread from the right atrium to the left atrium. This makes the right and left atria contract and pump blood to the ventricles. The electrical signal then reaches another special conducting tissue, the AV junction. The AV junction is at the base of the wall dividing the atria or the interatrial septum. The AV junction is composed of the upper part, the AV node, and the lower part, the bundle of his or the common bundle. The AV junction is the electrical connection of the atria and the ventricle. It is a relay station. In the AV node, there is some delay in the electrical signal to allow the atria to pump blood to the ventricles and allow the ventricles to fill blood. The signal is then transmitted to the bundle of his, which then divides into two branches the right and left bundle branch. There is one right bundle branch and two left bundle branches, left anterior fascicle and the left posterior fascicle. The electrical signal reaches the ventricles via the Purkinje fibers. The signal then spreads in the heart muscle going toward the outer part of the heart. These electrical currents are then recorded by electrogram via electrode. Simplistically, the direction of the cardiac impulse is from the right upper part of the body going toward the left lower part of the body. To record this, stickers or electrodes are placed on the patient attached to wires which are connected to the machine or a telemetry boxes. On the EKG machine or telemetry monitors, this electrical signal is displayed in what is called leads. These leads record the electrical voltage of the heart. And the leads are like several individuals watching a baseball game. They are positioned at different areas of the stadium. In routine telemetry, the six limb lead plus one or two chest leads are used. The two groups of limb leads are bipolar limb leads, namely one, two, and three, and augmented unipolar limb leads, namely AVR, AVL, and AVF. Because there are so much patient to be monitored, only one or two leads are used to dis or displayed for arrhythmia monitoring. The electrodes are attached to extremities when doing 12 leads or the body for telemetry monitoring. In most EKG rhythm tests, the lead 2 is used. Lead 2 records the voltage difference between the right arm and the left leg with a positive fall on the left leg. And as a general rule, an impulse going to the positive pole of a lead will create a positive or upright EKG deflection. Lead 2 will generate a positive deflection because the cardiac electrical impulse is moving from the right upper to the left lower part of the body, which is toward the positive pole of lead 2. For AVR, on the other hand, Complexes are predominantly negative because the impulse is traveling away its positive pole. Normal sinus rhythm is an impulse that originates in the sinus node. It is recognized by the P wave morphology that is upright P in leads 1, 2, and AVF, inverted in AVR, variable in leads 3 and AVL, upright in leads V4 to V6 in two bleed EKGs, most often a biphasic positive and negative in leads V1 and V2. And there are minor variations in morphology related to respiratory cycle. For EKG test taking purposes, an upright P in leads 2 is basically sinus rhythm. PR interval exceeds 0.12 seconds and can vary slightly with rate. 
the rate can be between 60 to 100 beats per minute. Most cardiologists agree that the operational limit for normal sinus rhythm ranges from 50 to 90 beats per minute. Rates lower than 60 beats per minute are considered to be sinus bradycardia, and rates higher than 100 beats per minute are considered to be sinus tachycardia. During some AV blocks, the sinus P waves are not followed by a QRS. The atrial rate which is computed by using the P to P interval is higher than the ventricular rate. The sinus rate is the basis for interpreting whether it is sinus bradycardia or tachycardia. So you will see interpretation like sinus tachycardia with second degree AV block type 2 with ventricular rates in the 50s or sinus rhythm with complete heart block with the ventricular rate with ventricular rates in the 30s. This is the full disclosure view of a patient on telemetry. It shows all limb leads 1, 2, 3, AVR, AVL, AVF, and B. The P wave has a sinus node morphology being upright in 1, 2, and AVF, and inverted in AVR. In EKG rhythm test, the leads commonly use lead 2 and B1. This is sinus rhythm with bundle branch block. The P wave is upright in lead 2, followed by a YQRS of about 0.12 seconds with a QS pattern in V1 with a rate of about 75 beats per minute. This is sinus rhythm with bundle branch block. The P wave is upright in lead 2, followed by a YQRS with a QR pattern in V1 with a rate of about 93 beats per minute. Now, a nice to know. Bundle branch block can either be left bundle branch block or LBBB or right bundle branch block or RBBB. There are certain criteria to make bundle branch block interpretation. However, generally by looking at V1, if the QRS is predominantly negative, then the block is most likely LBBB or left bundle branch block. And if the QRS is predominantly positive, and the block is most likely RBBB or right bundle branch block. This is sinus bradycardia. The P wave is upright in lead 2, followed by an RQRS complex with a PR interval about 0.16. The atrial and ventricular rates are about 38 bits per minute and was computed using the small box method of 1500 divided by 39 small squares. This is sinus bradycardia with a bundle branch block. This is lead 2 and B1. The P wave is upright in lead 2 followed by a wide QRS complex the QR pattern in B1. The PR interval is 0 0.20 seconds. And there is 1 to 1 atrial to ventricular ratio of about at the rate of about 56 beats per minute. This is sinus tachycardia. The P wave is upright in lead 2, followed by an arrow QRS complex. The P wave here is seen right after the T wave, with a rate of about 150 beats per minute. Sinus tachycardia with a bundle branch block. The P wave is upright in lead 2, followed by a wide QRS, a QS pattern in V1. The P wave is partly merged with the T wave and the rate is about 115 beats per minute. Now let's talk about sinus rhythm. It is recognized in the surface AKG with a rhythm that is irregular. The P wave and the PR intervals are normal. The P to B interval varies by 0.16 seconds or four small squares. So, strictly speaking, not all irregular sinus rhythm is sinus arrhythmia. Most basic EKG tests would classify any irregular sinus rhythm as sinus arrhythmia. If you are taking a test in a computer and the rhythm is irregular with sinus P wave, then choose sinus arrhythmia among the choices. 
if it is a paper test and it will be checked by a person and not a multiple choice test, then you can argue it is sinus arrhythmia or just sinus rhythm based on the above criteria. Remember, the P2P interval varies by 0.16 second in sinus arrhythmia. This is a nice to know. There are three types of sinus arrhythmia. Phasic, respiratory, non-phasic or non-respiratory, and ventriculophasic sinus arrhythmia. With phasic sinus arrhythmia, the rate is dependent on the respiratory cycle, increasing with respiration and decreasing with expiration. The pacemaker site in sinoatrial node shifts with respiration. The pacemaker site shifts higher the SA node, so the heart rate and the P wave amplitude or size in 2, 3, and AVF increase. As the pacemaker shifts lower the SA node, the P wave amplitude and the heart rate decrease. The heart rate changes gradually and rhythmically, thus differentiating it from non phasic sinus arrhythmia. So this is phasic sinus arrhythmia. The rhythm is irregular. The P wave is prominent at the beginning, but there is a decrease in amplitude or size as the rate decreases. For non-phasic or non-respiratory sinus arrhythmia, the P wave and PR interval are normal, but the PP intervals vary at random and independent of any physiologic function. So in here, the rhythm is irregular with upright P waves and normal PR interval. At a higher rate, the P wave is more prominent compared with slower rate. For ventricular phasic sinus arrhythmia, the P to P interval encompassing a QRS complex are shorter than the intervals without an intervening QRS complex. Ventricular phasic sinus arrhythmia is noted in the presence of an AV block. So this rhythm is still sinus because there are upright P waves seen in U2. The iterator rate is about 88 bit per minute with second degree AV block type 2. Or Mobitz 2 manifesting as 2 to 1 and 3 to 2 AV, AV conduction. The P to P interval encompassing a QRS is shorter compared to that without an intervening QRS complex, which is 0.68 seconds versus 0.76 seconds. Wandering atrial pacemaker or WAP. WAP is a variant of sinus arrhythmia. There is a passive transfer of dominant pacemaker focus from the sinus node to latent pacemakers. The change in P wave shape occurs gradually. And so there is only one pacemaker that is in control. It is recognized on the surface EKG with a change in P wave contour that is gradual and after several cycles, the pacemaker shifts back to the sinus node. Do not confuse WAP with multifocal atrial rhythm. So these strips are 10 seconds long leads two strips that are seconds apart that were intentionally printed to illustrate the gradual change of P wave contour and morphology. Thank you and have a good day.